Um, example number eight. Now with us. It's okay. We have to. Here's a here's a little different. We're going to use f prime and f double prime. Okay. To graph. F. So they tell us that f prime is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. All right. So we should be in courtesy mode. And so from there, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna figure out what f double prime is. Okay. So it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be 12x squared minus uh, 24x, right? Does that make sense? Did I do that right? Yeah. Remember how we do that? We we say three times four. That's how we get the twelve. Then we subtract one. That's how we get the two. We multiply two by twelve. That's how we get the twenty-four. Just one, one like that. We got it. Yes, proceed. What's right. example seven? <laughs> All right. So now f prime f prime tells us. When it's increasing and decreasing, that tells us the mins and maxes. So we need to find the critical points for f prime. So we said that f prime was 4x cubed minus 12x squared. So I want to solve this for, for the zeros, right? So I want to figure out what values of x make this equal zero. So if I pull out a 4x squared, okay, that leaves me with x minus 3. Is that right? No. Yes. How yeah. do you get three? What's four x squared times negative three? You got what I, I did this. It's the distributive property backwards, right? If I multiply that through, I get this top line. Okay. Right. So now I have two factors. Now remember, the only way I could get zero is if I say zero times zero. So this has to equal zero, and this has to equal zero. Right. So I'm going to say four x squared equals 0, and then x minus 3 has to equal 0. Well, this one's easy. We've got x equals 0, multiplicity 2, and then over here I've got x equals 3. So those are my critical points for f prime. What did f prime tell us? Increasing Mins and max. Mins and max is based on? Concavity. No. Uh, no. You said it. Increasing, increasing decreasing. So we're going to do what we call the first derivative test. Now I'm going to go a couple pages ahead. So give yourself some space because we're, you know, when you're taking your notes, give yourself a little space because we're going to do that same thing with uh, um, f double prime. So this is based on values of f prime, right? And let me give myself a little room here. What was f double or what was f prime again? It was f prime of x was. 4x cubed minus 12x squared. 4x cubed minus 12x squared, right? Like that. All right. And our critical point was negative 3 and 0. So now to do the first derivative test, I need to pick points. So this could be a min or it could be a max. This could be a min or it could be a max. So i got to figure out if it's increasing, decreasing, whatever. So I'm going to pick a really big negative number because we're going to look any number to the, to the left of this. Negative 1,000. So that means 4 times negative 1,000 cubed. And then we have minus 12, negative 1,000 <laughs> squared. Okay? Now when I do that, Negative 1,000 times negative 1,000 times negative 1,000, because we're cubing it, is going to be negative. And it's going to be a really big negative number. Actually, it'll be a really small negative number when you think about it, right? Wait, why did you do negative three? Wasn't it positive three? I'm picking any number to the left of negative three. I know, but why negative three? Because negative three was one of the zeros. No, well, it's positive. positive. Oh, was it positive three? Yeah. Sorry, I've, d I've done a lot of math today. So let's do 0 and positive 3. All right, well, it still works because we're looking for something to the left of 0, right? Okay, thank you for correcting me on that mistake. I appreciate it. So anyways, 
Now this is going to be squared. A thousand squared is a million, and it'll be positive, but then it's going to be multiplied by a negative 12. So I've got a really big negative number minus another big negative number, so I got a negative negative number. This whole thing would be negative. Do I care what the exact number is? No. Do you believe me when I say that it's negative? No. Do you see where that comes from? Now, the question that was just asked was, why are you doing what you're doing? When it's net, when f prime, which is the slope, is negative, what is my original function doing? Decreasing. So when this is negative, it tells me that my original function, f of x, this right here, tells me that f of x is decreasing all the way up to zero. So my function is going to be coming down like that, right? Now we need to pick a point between zero and three. So I'm going to say, let's do one. So if I say f prime of one, I get four times one cubed minus 12 times one squared. Okay, that worked out nice. I've got four times one minus 12 times one. Isn't that negative eight? So that's what? Still decreasing. Still decreasing. Now, remember that x equals 0 was a multiplicity 2, right? And whenever we have a multiplicity 2, an even multiplicity, remember that the mins and the maxes level out. Do you guys remember that from your days of pre-calc? Way back when? Way back when? Is it Wait, why did you think it's negative one? I can pick uh, sometimes when we pick a really negative number, it becomes very clear that the answer will be negative. I could have chosen negative one, but I like to choose really big negative numbers and really big positive numbers because it's really easy to tell if it's positive or negative. I could have chosen any number less than zero. Okay. Now we've got negative, negative. Is that, can we do that? Yeah. yeah, we can. And what Mr. Adams was trying to tell you guys is that, remember, this is really x squared equals 0, which means x equals 0 multiplicity two. And so remember, when we have something like that, the curve kind of plateaus, right? And so that's what Mr. Adams was saying, is that that particular critical point was a critical point, the same value twice. Now, if you don't remember that, that's okay. We're still going through this process. So what's the next step in the process, guys? Picking a number greater than three. Picking a number greater than three. Now, we could pick, if I pick a really big number, it becomes obvious, but I could pick four and plug it in. But we'll pick 100 because that's what she suggested. So if I put 100 in, then I have 4 times 100 cubed minus 12 times 100 squared. Well, now here's the thing. 100 cubed is going to be way bigger than 100 squared. So is my answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. So we come right up here and we say positive. So now, if I go decreasing, decreasing, do I have a min or a max? Is it a minimum or a maximum? It's neither, right? It's still a critical point. So this is still a critical point, but we're gonna, it's gonna look like this. Our function f of x is gonna be, it's gonna come down, it's gonna be decreasing and then keep on decreasing. So it's gonna do one of these deals where it's decreasing, stops decreasing, and then decreases. And this will occur at x equals zero. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then, and then, and then somewhere we'll have a point of inflection and it'll start curling up. And then right here will be x equals Three. So it's like decreasing, decreasing, then increasing. And so that's f of x, right? 
Is there two points of inflection though? This is this behaves like a point of inflection, but remember, points of inflection only occur for concavity, right? And, and the answer is yes, because we have a quadratic that should have two real solutions for f double prime. So don't get too ahead of me, okay? Um, any other questions about where we're at, what we're doing? Okay, so that's just for f prime. Now, the only thing that tells me is that we're decreasing, then we're decreasing again, and then here we're increasing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out my calculator. You guys could get your calculators out too. And let me clear this out. Okay, and let me turn off my plots. And I'm not quite sure what my, so this is just a plain graph. And I'm going to do a, a, a standard zoom. And we may, we may need to change it. So what I'm saying, based on what we've done with f prime, we have two critical points. One occurs when x equals 0. The other one occurs when x equals 3. Now our function is decreasing, right? It's decreasing here. It's going to level out a little bit here, and then it's going to decrease some more, and then after this point, it's going to increase. Does that make sense so far? Just based on f prime. So now we have to determine: does it curl? Does it curve up or down? If it curls, if it curves down, and we have concave down, then it'll come in kind of swoop in with this kind of curve. And if it's concave up, it'll come in swooping like this, right? So concave down will kind of look like this coming through, okay? But if it's concave up, it'll kind of come through like this. Does that make sense? So that's what we got to figure out next, all right? So onward. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with f double prime. So what was f double prime? It was um, 12x squared minus 24x. 12x squared minus 24x. Yeah. Alright, so if I factor out 12x, I get uh, x minus 2, right? Yeah. Whoops. Like this. And I want to find the zeros of that because that's where the critical points occur. So if uh, this and this has to equal 0, so I get 12x equals 0, which is just x equals 0. And then I get x minus 2 equals 0, so then I get x equals 2. So those are my two critical points. Now we're going to do the second derivative test, which is just like the first derivative test. Can so I'm going to come... Can you that there for a second? Yeah. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. With that being said, to do the second derivative test, I wonder if I have room. No, I don't have room there. Well, I, actually, I do. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but what were my critical points again? Zero and two. What was it? 12x squared minus 24x? Yeah. All right. And it was zero and two? Yeah. So this is going to tell me concave up, concave down. That's it. So I need to figure out f double prime of some really negative number. I'm going to plug in negative 1,000. Now, what's 1,000 squared? A positive number, right? A negative times a negative is positive, so this becomes a positive number. And I have this negative times this negative, so I have a positive number. 
When you take a positive number and you add it to a positive number, what will your answer be? Positive. positive. So this is positive. What does that tell me about f of x? It tells me that it's concave up, so it's going to curl up. All right. Now what do we want to do? Well, now we got to choose a number between 0 and 2. Let's do 1. So if I say 12 times 1 squared minus 24 times 1, um, I get 12 minus 24. Is that positive or negative? So that's negative. So what does that tell me about f of x? Concave down. That makes sense? Yeah, so since we didn't have any multiplicities of our roots, the next one will probably be concave up, but we're going to double check just to make sure, okay? So now I need something bigger than um, bigger than 2. So I'm going to, I'll just do 100. 12 times 100 squared minus 24 times 100. Well, this is 2,400, but this is like 12 million minus 2,400. So this will be positive, right? So this is positive, which means my f of x would be concave up. Okay? Does that make sense to you guys? What would that graph Well, let's see. So we know, God bless you, we said that we had two other critical points, which were 0 and 2. Now, to the left of 0, what did we say it was? Concave what? It was concave up, right? So it kind of went up like this. And then at right here, we had a point of inflection, right? Here it went concave down. This was also a point of inflection. And then it went concave up. So now I'm going to attempt to kind of sketch what this thing should look like. Um, I'm going to come down. So I'm going to come down somewhere. And this was like, so it's going to come concave down, concave down. Right? This is a point of inflection, so it's going to kind of come this way, and then it's going to curve this way, and that, did we have a min or a max here? Probably a min. And then it's going to come out this way. Wait, but when it start down, it does because it goes up. So when it... Okay. So it should look like this, and she has a very good question, so let me repeat it. She said, wouldn't it start down? Um, if this was, so what I'm saying, what I'm suggesting is, is that f, let's try to figure out what f prime is. Do you guys think what, or what f is? Do you think we could do that? Yeah. Based on f prime? Yeah. All right. So if this was 4x, this, so this should be x to the fourth, right? Yeah. So what did I, I need to multiply 4 by something and then end up with 4? How do I, like, in other words, and then <clears throat> I had x to the 4th. Like, how did I, like, how, is that just x to the 4th? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Would that be the derivative? Yeah. Well, not the whole thing. What's the derivative of x to the 4th? 4x to the 3rd. 4x to the 3rd. OK, well, that was easy. Now, this, is, this one might be a little more complicated. So I've got x. This should be x cubed. 4x to the 3rd again. So if this was 4x to the 3rd, like that, when I multiply this through, I get this, right? Yeah. Now, we probably have something over here, right, plus C, right? What would that look like graphically? It might look like this, right? It would come down, it has to cross once, twice, like that. 
How many times does that cross? Four times? So it'd have four X's, four zeros, right? Yeah. And then three humps, right? It'd be one, two, three, because you have one less humps than the power of the polynomial, right? Okay. We have to sketch the graph that kind of looks like that. So if I were to sketch the graph of this, if I were to come back here where I said we were, um, I would probably sketch the graph like, well, let's just do it on the calculator. Probably like that. 